Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be explaining the distinction between extraneous variables and confounds. And this is a concept that students often find very slippery and difficult to understand, so I'm going to do my best to give you lots of examples. An extraneous variable is any variable that relates to any of the independent or dependent variables in a study. And there are literally infinite extraneous variables for a study. You can always think of more variables that could relate to either the independent or the dependent variable. But let's look at some examples. So here's a study. An apartment complex is interested in knowing whether having children influences how long people rent an apartment from them. So they want to know, do their tenants who have kids stay for a long amount of time in their apartments or a shorter amount of time in their apartments compared to their tenants who don't have kids. So let's look at some uh, extraneous variables. So here you have a family and uh, being a parent is going to influence your fatigue levels. So parents are likely to be more tired than non-parents. You also have the amount of hobbies that parents have is likely to be lower with children than the amount of hobbies that people have when they don't have children. And lastly, people who have children are likely to be older than people who don't have children. So those are all extraneous variables that relate to the independent variable. Now we have the dependent variable. So what are some things that could influence whether somebody moves out of an apartment complex? Well, if their job moves, they're likely to move out. If the apartment management changes, that might influence whether they move out. And if new amenities are suddenly included with rent, maybe that would influence whether people are likely to move out. So all of these are examples of extraneous variables. They're variables that relate to either the independent or the dependent variable. So now let's compare this with confounds. So you can remember from just a slide ago that any variable that relates to any of the independent or dependent variables in a study is an extraneous variable. A confound is any variable that relates to both the independent and dependent variables in a study. So just by this definition, you can already see that a confound is an extraneous variable. All confounds are extraneous variables, but all extraneous variables are not confounds. So a confound is when you can say maybe something other than the independent variable is what caused the effect on the dependent variable. So there's kind of two ways you can think about confounds. Both are correct. One is, could this variable be an alternative explanation for the findings? And another is, does this variable relate to both the independent and the dependent variable? So let's look at our example from a slide ago. So here we have these same variables and these same extraneous variables. And we're going to try to determine if any of these extraneous variables are also confounds. So let's look at fatigue levels. We already established that fatigue levels is probably related to whether people have children. But the question now is, is it also related to the dependent variable? Is it also related to whether somebody is going to live in an apartment complex? And the answer is probably not. It's unlikely that how tired somebody is is related to whether they live in an apartment complex and whether they choose to move out. The next one is the amount of hobbies. So we already established that that's related to the independent variable. Is it related to the dependent variable? Would the amount of hobbies somebody has influence whether they move out of an apartment complex? Again, probably not. That's probably just an extraneous variable. So let's try going the other way. How about if the job moves? Well, if the job moves, that's certainly likely to influence um, whether somebody's going to move out of an apartment complex. But if the job moves, does it influence whether somebody has children? Probably not. They probably already had those children. So that's an extraneous variable and not a confound. Let's do another one. So what if the apartment management changes? Well, if the apartment manage management changes, it is likely to influence whether somebody moves out of the apartment complex, but is it likely to influence whether those people have children? And the answer is probably not. So that's probably just an extraneous variable. 
Now let's go back and look at age. So we know that age is related to whether somebody has children. And is age related to whether somebody lives in an apartment complex? Yeah, actually, it probably is. So age is a confound. So one way of establishing this at confound is to say age is related to both whether you have children and whether you're going to live in an apartment complex. Another way to establish that as a compound is to say, well, whether a family continues to live in an apartment complex may not be because they have children. It may be because they've gotten older and they don't want to live in an apartment anymore. So that's the distinction between a confound and an extraneous variable, and we're going to go through several more examples. So what I want you to do is pause this and read the video, and when you're ready to talk about these things being extraneous variables or confounds, unpause the video. But keep in mind that the first thing you need to do is identify what the independent and the dependent variables are in this study, because what you need to do is establish whether each of these variables is related to both the independent and the dependent variables, or just one of them. Okay, so the independent variable is meal type, and the dependent variable is post-study weight. So let's look at this first item. Does it relate to meal type, and does it relate to post-study weight? Well, how much participants weighed before the study probably doesn't relate to their randomly assigned meal type, but it surely does relate to their post-study weight. So this is an extraneous variable, not a confound. Now let's talk about how much the participants exercised during the study. Is it going to be related to the randomly assigned meal type they got? Nope. But it is going to be related to their post-study weight. So this is another example of an extraneous variable and not a confound. Lastly, let's talk about how much the participants like their meals. Is that going to be related to meal type? Maybe. It might be that most people prefer a low-carb meal rather than a low-fat meal. So... Um, it may be that even though you're randomly assigning to people to eat a low-carb meal or a low-fat meal, you're also randomly assigning people to whether they like what they're eating or not. And how much the participants like their meals is probably also going to be related to their post-study weight, because if they like their meals, they're likely to eat more of the food than if they didn't like their meals. So this is an example of a confound. So we established that it's related to both the independent and the dependent variable. And the other way to think about it is that it might not be that a low-carb meal is better or worse than a low-fat meal for people. And that might not be what's causing people to have differences in post-study weight. What may be happening is that people were actually eating different amounts of food. And what condition they were randomly assigned to was ultimately influencing how much food they were eating. And that might be the alternative explanation for the outcome. So um, pause this video, and when you're ready, let's go ahead and carry on. So the independent variable is whether the customer brings a friend in. And the dependent variable is the number of t-shirts purchased. So here we have whether the customer likes t-shirts. Is that related to whether the customer brought a friend in? Probably not. It is related most likely to how many t-shirts the customer purchased. So that's an extraneous variable. Let's move on. How many friends the customer has is probably related to whether the customer brought a friend in. But it is probably not related to the number of t-shirts purchased. So how many friends somebody has is probably unrelated to how many t-shirts they buy in any one instance. So that is an extraneous variable. And the number of available t-shirts is surely linked to how many t-shirts a customer purchases, but not linked to whether the customer brings a friend in. So this is also an extraneous variable. Pause the video and read through this and unpause the video when you're ready. So in this case, the independent variable is sunlight exposure, and the dependent variable is serotonin levels. And just so you know, that uh, chemical on the right is serotonin. So whether the participants are in therapy is probably going to be related to the participants' serotonin levels. 
but it is not going to be related to whether the participants are randomly assigned to be in the sunlight exposure condition. So whether the participants are in therapy is going to be an extraneous variable and not a confound. And the ability to go outside is probably going to be related to whether they were exposed to sunlight, because that's how Jamal was manipulating sunlight exposure. Were they allowed to go outside or not is how he determined whether they were going to be exposed to the sunlight. But it's also likely to be related to serotonin levels. I imagine that if you told people that they are not allowed to go outside and they have to stay away from their windows, it would influence their serotonin levels. So the ability to go outside is related to both sunlight exposure and serotonin levels, so it's a confound. Another way to think of this is that perhaps it's not that being exposed to the sun is what's influencing people's serotonin levels. Maybe it's being told that they're not allowed to go outside is what's influencing people's serotonin levels. Lastly, whether the participants are taking any drugs that influence serotonin, would influence serotonin is certainly going to be related to the serotonin levels, but is not going to be related to whether the participants were randomly assigned to the sunlight or the not sunlight condition. So this is an example of an extraneous variable and not a confound. As always, if you have any questions about any of this, please do use one or more than one of these options. It's very important to me that you feel supported. And if you have more questions, please don't let this be the end of it. Please ask.